Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another instant deck tech. So today we're heading to Modern to check out this super sweet mono black death cloud list that recently took Makola J. Damon to a top four finish at a Magic League trial. So congrats to Makola on their finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break it all down, if you enjoy this deck and want to see it main to videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gives it's a shot at being made into videos next week. So Death Cloud is built around, of course, the card Death Cloud, a three black and X sorcery that makes each player lose X life, discard X card, sack X creatures, and sack X land. So it's basically the ultimate reset button. Hands are usually completely destroyed, the board is wiped of creatures and of lands, and each player loses some amount of life. So Death Cloud, uh, is an example of a symmetrical effect. And we talked a couple of weeks ago on our Brewers Minute in regards to Gurupur Ori about how to build around a symmetrical effect. And the basic idea is you want to exploit this information gap where you know you have Death Cloud, but your opponent doesn't know you have Death Cloud, which means you get to play cards that work well with Death Cloud while your opponent does not. And then even though the effect is theoretically symmetrical, you will get more advantage out of Death Cloud when it resolves. And this deck is an amazing example of it because just about every card in the entire deck is built around making Death Cloud as good as possible. So first off, we have the key piece of the deck, Mindstone and Guardian Idol, two mana mana rocks. Guardian Idol can also turn into a creature, which isn't bad, but these cards do double duty when it comes to Death Cloud. On one hand, for Death Cloud to really be good, you want to cast it X4, X5, which means you're going to need 7, 8 mana available. And in a mono black deck, you don't get much ramp outside of artifacts, so these cards help you power up your Death Cloud before you cast it to make sure you can cast a big enough Death Cloud to really wipe away everything from both sides of the table. More importantly, these cards stick around. Artifact is not a type that Death Cloud hits, so the turn after Death Cloud, when you untap, you're going to have one, two, three mana available, and your opponent, since they likely aren't playing mana rocks, is going to have zero mana available. So right there, you break the symmetry, you get to rebuild faster because you have these mana rocks left over while your opponent likely has nothing. Even the creatures, though, are built around the Death Cloud plan. So Simeon Spirit Guide, the deck really doesn't plan on casting it. It has very few ways it actually can cast it. It's essentially plus one X on Death Cloud. You exile from your hand, gain that one extra mana that you can use to power up your Death Cloud, and since you're going to be discarding your hand anyway to Death Cloud, the opportunity cost of spending your Simeon Spirit Guide is really non-existent. Solemn Simulacrum works on both sides, almost like the Mana Rocks. On one hand, when it enters the battlefield, it gets you a land to ramp you into a bigger Death Cloud, and then, when it dies, you get to draw a card, so when you untap post-Death Cloud, not only will you have more mana, thanks to your Mana Rocks, but you also have more cards in hand. Uh, because remember, each player has to discard X from Death Cloud. Likely your opponent will discard everything, you'll discard everything, but then you'll draw a card from Solemn, so you're going to break the symmetry in multiple ways. Kalidas is one of the sweeter ones. It's awesome in creature matchups, so say your opponent has a bunch of creatures they sacrifice to Death Cloud, you're also going to have to sacrifice your Kalidas, but you're going to get a 2-2 zombie for each creature of your opponents that dies, so you untap with not only more mana from your mana rocks, not only with more cards thanks to Solemn Simulacrum, but also more creatures because you're going to get zombie tokens for each creature that your opponent sacrifices if a Cletus is on the battlefield when you cast your Death Cloud. And then the deck has some cards that kind of work to prevent the opponent from recovering after a Death Cloud. Liliana doesn't get hit by Death Cloud because it's a Planeswalker, and it's just a good card all around, but after after Death Cloud, hands are empty, opponent and you both go into top deck mode. If you have a Liliana on the battlefield, you can just make your opponent discard the card they draw each turn, but if you keep plussing the Liliana, you're going to make it hard for them to hold anything in their hand while they're trying to rebuild their mana. Chalice of the Void does something similar. If you get on the battlefield X1 or X2, one way the deck could lose post to Death Cloud is the opponent simply draws a mountain, then the next turn they draw a Goblin Guide and just beat you down with the Goblin Guide. Well, Chalice of the Void keeps that from happening, just sits on the battlefield, locks those early plays out of the game to make it even harder for the opponent to recover after a death cloud. And then Damnation is pretty much just to keep you alive while you're waiting to build up into
into the Death Cloud. As far as the mana base, you got Gemstone Caverns, Mutavolt is a creature land, a couple of Urborgs, and Bajuka Bogs to hate on the graveyard. Important if you're making your opponent sack, if there's stuff that could be coming back from the graveyard, Bajuka Bog puts an end to that. And then just a bunch of swamps. As far as the sideboard is concerned, you got a sweet Eldrazi sideboard package, so it probably looked weird to see those Gemstone Caverns. Also, the Mutavolt. Well, since you want to sideboard into these colorless spells in some matchups, you need to have those colorless lands, and you even have an extra colorless land in Seagate Wreckage to bring in alongside the Eldrazi. Then four Ley Lines of the Void to hate on Dredge and Snapcaster decks. A bunch more removal, Knight of Souls Betrayal, great against Lingering Souls, other small aggressive decks, the fourth Damnation, and a couple Engineered Explosives. And that is Mono Black Death Cloud for Modern. Anyway, that's been our instant deck tech for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon.